Most visitors to Rimini, Italy go for fun in the sun. But for those who know that Rimini is home to Bimota, one of the most exclusive motorcycle brands in the world, the reason to come here is to twist the throttle. Centuries ago, Rimini was an important outpost of the Roman Empire. Today, it is one of the most famous seaside resorts along Italy's Adriatic Riviera. It is a beach lover's paradise, but it can also get quite warm in the summer. And perhaps that's the reason Bimota originally started as a heating and air conditioning company. Bimota actually started with three gentlemen, Mr. Bianchi, Mr. Mori, Mr. Tamburini, each of whom donated two of their letters from their last name into forming Bimota in the heating and air conditioning business. And they were doing sheet metal ducting and building tubing and those kinds of things. And it turns out that Mr. Tamburini was a motorcycle nut. Mr. Tamburini is Massimo Tamburini, a man who would become one of the greatest motorcycle designers of all time. And if he hadn't crashed while racing a powerful Honda in 1972, Bimota might still be making air conditioners. While recovering from three broken ribs, Tamburini got the inspiration to use what he knew about metal pipes to build a new frame for his motorcycle. Mr. Tamburini built a frame for his Honda single cam 750, took it to the racetrack, and when he was running around the racetrack, he started getting noticed because it was an extremely fast bike. And shortly thereafter, he started having people come up to him and say, would you make a frame for my bike? So Massimo Tamburini went into the motorcycle frame business. His first frame lowered the weight and center of gravity on the Honda. He called his creation the HB1, H for Honda, B for Bimota, and one because it was the first bike the company ever built. The bike also began a tradition of exclusivity because only 10 HB1s were ever made. The way I describe Massimo Tamburini is he's a motorcycle genius. Here's a man that really started out in the heating and air conditioning business, and he built a chassis for a Honda. He just absolutely had a sense of how to develop things. I don't think he has a tremendous amount of formal education as far as, you know, doing finite element analysis on computers and stuff like that. He just has a certain innate ability to understand what's required and how to get there. And so if you look at some of the frames he did, I would say genius on one hand, and he's a motorcycle artist on the other hand. <laughs> As a really small motorcycle company, Bimota couldn't afford to design and build its own engines. So Tamburini sold kits so you could build your own Bimota using parts from a donor bike. They didn't offer bikes originally. They offered frame kits where you would buy a complete Japanese motorcycle. You'd take the engine out. You'd take the wiring harness off. You'd take some of the controls off. You'd take the instruments off. you build it into this kit you bought from him. And now you had a GP replica bike or a, you know, what became a super bike that you could build yourself. During the 70s and early 80s, Bimota would use engines from Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Kawasaki to power its motorcycles. While Bimota is successful on the racetrack, it suffers the loss of Massimo Tamburini, who's hired away to work at Kajiva, one of the largest motorcycle companies in Italy. His replacement is a young engineer named Federico Martini. He did two very significant bikes. The first one he did was the YB4. The YB4 is the first bike that was in production that had a perimeter aluminum frame around it. The other thing that Federico Martini did was design the DB1. The DB1 is very special because it was the first all-Italian bike 
if the motor bade. All Italian because the DB1, like current B motors, is powered by an engine built by Ducati. Pierre Luigi Marconi was the third head designer at Bimota and the man responsible for a radical design that eliminates the traditional forks and front end on a motorcycle and connects the front wheel with a very different structure. The idea is to keep the weight of the bike off the front wheel. Others have tried it, but Bimota is the only company building the bike, a bike called the Tessie. The reason they call it the Tessie is because when Pierre Luigi Marconi had done his thesis on, on alternate front suspensions in the, for his PhD at the University of Bologna, the word tesi in Italian means thesis. With the tesi and the rest of the current Bimota line, the tiny company from Rimini has come full circle. It builds rare and exclusive motorcycles, and it still is willing to take a risk and push both conventional wisdom and motorcycle technology with a twist of the throttle. The sights and sounds of an old village in the hills of northern Italy. About an hour's ride from the Adriatic coast, where the city of Rimini sits as a focal point of the Italian Riviera. Hidden away on a side street in Rimini is a nondescript building in which magic awaits. From art on the walls to art forms on tables, this is a mechanical mecca for anyone who loves to twist the throttle. This is the factory for Bimota Motorcycles, one of the most rare and exclusive brands in the world. It's not a factory like we bring in, you know, people from the stock market and try to get them to invest in our company. You know, this is just a building where, you know, love of building motorcycles is everywhere. It's more an artisan's workshop than a motorcycle factory, and it's not easy to find. At Bimota, the focus is on their unique bikes and not their building. So you drive in this neighborhood and you're looking it for the address the first time and you know it's number 38 and you're on the right road and you're driving around and you're looking for a factory and there is no factory and when you get here you go past it and you go up oh, I passed it and then you have to turn around and come back and then you see literally a logo on the on the front of the building that's no bigger than a foot and a half in diameter and it says B. <laughs> There are no computer-controlled machines here. Everything is done by hand, and the goal is something between obsession and perfection, like spending hours with a hand-operated lathe to mill the perfect oil filler cap out of billet aluminum, engraved with a simple B for Bimota. The way they build motorcycles at Bimota is almost the way an artist would build a piece of sculpture or a painter would do a painting. There is no assembly line at Bimota. It's a workshop where at most they can build four or five bikes in one day. And each motorcycle is hand built from start to finish. With tools and parts neatly lined up, the build begins by slowly and carefully adding the front section of the frame to the engine. There is no sense of urgency. Watching the rear frame and suspension go on, it's clear that it takes as long as it takes to build a Bimota. At least one full day just for final assembly.
The front triple clamp, forks and wheel come next. All the custom-made pieces are beginning to take the form of a motorcycle. This guy feels a certain sense of pride. He gets to feel all the beautifully machined, handmade parts that go on this thing. And if you notice, like, they take the time to put a little finger full of grease on some of the parts, and, you know, they, they loosely put things together, and then they've got the torque wrench, and everything is hand-torqued to the right specification. to stop five or six times in the process and took out a clean rag and, and wiped his fingerprints off of the frame because you know this is what he does this is he doesn't want to even look at fingerprints on this beautiful piece of artwork that he's building the sculptor that he's sculpting he wants to make sure that every time he turns around to put something back on this thing it's as beautiful as it can be and and that really kind of shows you the way these people feel about the job they're doing Even final testing is hands-on. There's no computer checking the data. The man who built the bike fires it up. And then he'll take it out for a test drive, the old-fashioned way of building and testing a brand new bike. There's a certain passion in the guy downstairs that fires it up for the first time and rides it around the block. And, you know, these guys really are motorcycle people. They're not just assembly workers that are going to a job in the morning. And this is something you'd never see in any other motorcycle factory. The guys who built the bike from start to finish end their day by building a shipping crate for their creation. Another Bimota is about to leave the factory. Somewhere, some lucky owner will soon be able to twist the throttle on one of the most exclusive motorcycles in the world. Riding the incredible hills above northern Italy's Adriatic coast, and yes, this road we're on is considered a two-lane highway, even though just our bikes seem to eat up all the pavement. We're riding two Bimotas, rare handmade Italian bikes that are as much moving art as motorcycles, with shapes that can break your heart and price tags that can do the same thing to your wallet. The new Bimota Delario is the most practical and lowest priced bike the company builds. But then again, since it first began building bikes in 1973, Bimota has never worried much about being practical or how much things cost. What Bimota does care about is their bikes speak to the heart and soul, especially when you twist the throttle. There's a slight sense of apprehension as we get ready to ride. We've been on so many bikes all over the world, but none that were completely handmade or this rare and pricey. In a good year, Bimota will build somewhere between 500 and 1,000 motorcycles. That makes them extremely rare and precious. So Dylan and I take it easy as we explore the fantastic country roads in the hills above Rimini, Italy. Many of these roads were originally built by Roman engineers almost 2,000 years ago. The tight corners and cobblestone streets in the tiny villages are a bit of a challenge, but somehow their iconic sense of history seems to contrast perfectly with Bimota's modern sense of Italian motorcycle art. Some of those turns, it was like, you know, continuous 180 <laughs> degrees, and then you're going up 45 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Remarkable motorcycles. I mean, just light as a feather, you just sort of tip it in and whoosh, there it goes. Steering, the brakes, acceleration, the lightness of the whole thing. It's a... 
No, this is this is definitely a uh, a lesson in, in reduction of weight. Yes. That is what this is all about. Handling is what the motors have always been about. When the company started in 1973, they only built motorcycle frames. Even today, while they build entire bikes, they don't make their own engines. Newbie motors are powered by two-valve air-cooled Ducati engines, lightweight motors that crank out about 90 horsepower. It's funny how the ounces add up to pounds, and, and that adds up to a tremendously different feel in the motorcycle. You know, we have a way of, in today's world of really complicating things, and here it, it's very much a simplification. Flickable in a very different kind of way. Yes. Not, not like a, a 600cc sport bike when you talk about flickable. This is light. It's whatever exists beyond flickable. <laughs> Super flickable. Yes. The Delario weighs 390 pounds. It isn't the lightest motorcycle around, but it is very compact and the handlebar seat and foot pegs are perfectly placed for a rare combination of maximum comfort and control of the bike. The Delario is just so easy to ride. It's so naturally comfortable. You can push it, you can ride it easy, it does whatever you want it to do. I think the thing that's phenomenal about the Delario is in that same category with Brutale or a Monster, and yet it is so narrow. You get on the thing and you think you're riding a bicycle like you were when you were a kid, and it's just sort of you and the engine, and that's yeah. all it feels like. The Delario is what's called a naked bike. There's no fancy fairing or extraneous bodywork. What you get for your $30,000 is a unique balance between engineering necessity and design aesthetics. A lot of bikes that Naked bikes, standard bikes, you feel like you have to muscle them when I see them with the straighter bar, you know. You have to do a lot of upper body counter steering. Not with that, that thing just... Both of these bikes really let you know when they're happy and when they're not happy. Absolutely. And I was able to keep that one happier more. <laughs> <laughs> and the Bimota Delario returns the favor. Keeping both me and Dylan very happy indeed as we continued to ride the fantastic Italian mountain roads on one of the most unique and exotic motorcycles in the world. The Bimota DB5 in the hills of northern Italy. When it was first introduced to the public, the prestigious Motorcycle Design Association voted it one of the most beautiful motorcycles in the world. The DB5 is beauty matched with performance. This is a machine that lives for a twist of the throttle. It's not often you get a chance to ride a dream, but that is exactly what the Bimota DB5 is. A dream come true for this small boutique motorcycle company. Better at being artisans rather than accountants, Bimota had actually gone out of business for a few years. The DB5 is one of the bikes that brought the entire company back to life in 2003. The DB5 is a very aggressive and compact sport bike. Since Bimota doesn't make its own engines, the DB5 is powered by a Ducati motor carried in a special handmade tubular frame. The DB5 is a little more comfortable for me because it's more what I'm used to. It's a little more aggressive, a little more of a, a classic sport bike feeling. It's an expensive feeling. The Bimota DB5 lists at $32,500 and it's worth every penny because only a few hundred are made each year. And while the bike has a full fairing, its designers intentionally left the engine exposed, as if to emphasize that their creation is more than art. It's an art form that can fly down the road at superbike speeds. The frame, the lightness, the light yeah, wheels. The frame, the lightness, our mappings. This, you're much more in the full sport bike mode. Mm. And I found, for example, you know, feeling a little weight on my right wrist oh. after a while. This is definitely more extreme, absolutely. Yeah. The DB5 is a rolling work of art, where even the parts you can't see are special, like hand machine plates of aircraft alloy that help hold together the DB5's unique tubular frame. This is clearly a motorcycle built with passion, innovation, and a uniquely Italian flair for design. 
the same engine that's in a Monster or, you know, a Multistrada, you know, a Ducati, and totally different feeling. Here you have, you know, an air-cooled two-valve L-twin engine, mm. and they feel a lot sportier here than True. in other, you know, other motorcycles yes. that have the same characteristics. The engine cranks out 92 horsepower, but what makes it and the bike feel so sporty is that the DB5 is remarkably light. The entire bike loaded with fuel only weighs 342 pounds. It's a real interesting sort of lesson about how you don't need to have 200 horsepower to have a bike that feels like it's really fast. Oh, no, you're right on. I mean, so many people get just preoccupied with one thing, and that's the horsepower number. You know, you can have 200 horsepower, and if it's not all designed, the frame right, and everything else right, what you've got is 200 horsepower, but not a fun ride. And ultimately, it's the whole package and how it works together is what matters. These things are, are exceptional fun because the whole package is designed to work together. By definition, motorcycle riders like to think of themselves as being a little different from most people. If you want to be really different, the Bimota DB5 is the bike to ride. Hand-built in very small numbers by one of the world's most legendary and at times quirky Italian companies, the DB5 is extremely rare. It may not be the fastest or most powerful bike around, but it is a unique motorcycle that makes a unique statement about what happens when Italian art and technology come together with a twist of the throttle.